Welcome back, everyone. We're ready for part two. And thank you for coming back for part two. We are going to go ahead and get started on, we have a variety of different topics. You, you can see um, from the slide that's displayed, we're going to be covering a lot of information in part two of this training. For our new bookkeepers, we will be highlighting the many areas our office wants you to be familiar with. So let's dive into the first topic, which is Child Nutrition Program Overview. Next slide. Just bear with me for a second. The Nebraska Department of Education Nutrition Services administers and monitors the child nutrition programs you see listed on the slide. These include the National School Lunch Program, often referred to as NSLP, the After School Care Snack Program, the seamless summer option, which operates, can operate during the summer months. The school breakfast program, sometimes referred to as SBP. The special milk program, which is referred to as SMP. Our office administers the Child and Adult Care Food Program, referred to as the CACFP program for short. And they administer not only meals in daycare homes and centers, but the at-risk after-school meal program. The Summer Food Service Program, SFSP, and then our office also administers the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, referred to as FFVP. So lots of acronyms are used. And so those are acronyms referred to the different programs. Programs can be operated in both public and private schools, res residential care facilities, and other institutions um, that meet certain requirements and regulations for the different programs that I have just outlined. So let's move to the next slide. In the school meals program, um, you will hear the term school food authorities, and that also has an acronym, SFAs for short. A school food authority means the governing body which is responsible for the administration of one or more schools and has the legal authority to operate the program. School food authorities, SFAs, who participate in the program can receive reimbursement for the meals served in schools. To get those reimbursement dollars, schools must adhere to the rules and regulations of the program. USDA provides those federal dollars in the form of reimbursement to schools and institutions. Those dollars then are distributed to the Nebraska Department of Education Nutrition Services, who then distributes these dollars, next slide, to schools and institutions. In order to get those dollars, schools and institutions need to meet the federal regulations required to receive those funds. Nutrition services staff conduct what's called administrative reviews, sometimes referred to as ARs, and procurement reviews, referred to as PRs, to ensure compliance with the rules and regulations. 
Normally, these reviews are conducted in a five-year cycle, but due to COVID, not, we did not conduct reviews for two years. We operate different program than the school meals program for those two years. The five-year review cycle has been extended. Last year, reviews were conducted, and we will be entering year three of the cycle for, for school year 23-24. Reviews were conducted last year, our, the transition year back to normal. The number and who will be reviewed for school year 23-24 has not yet been determined. But be assured, if you will be having these reviews, the ARs, administrative reviews, and a PR procurement review, you will be notified in the fall that you will be having these reviews. They're done, they're conducted or done at the same time. Um, and we will be notifying you. We will once again be contracting with TCB, which is our contract company um, to conduct reviews. And so we have contracted with this company for many years now, and we will continue to contract with them for the next school year. So let's move to the next slide, getting started. As a new bookkeeper, you need to be, be aware of the Nutrition Services website. This is where you will find important information. And we discussed many of the different areas of the Nutrition Services website in part one. There is also a second website, which Allie talked about in part one that you must be familiar with, which is called the Child Nutrition Program or often referred to as CMP. This website can be accessed through the Nutrition Services website. Let's get started and take a better look at the Nutrition Services website. So at the top of the slide, you will find the link to Nutrition Services website. Bookmark this as a favorite because you will be utilizing the forms and resource section frequently. Under nutrition services are the other programs I previously mentioned, such as the child and adult care food program and the summer food service program. This page is included in your handout packet. And hopefully you can see it better if you pull out your hand out. Um, you will also find the nutrition services contact information on this page. That is our directory. We've included the contact page in your handout packet. It contains phone numbers and email addresses of the nutrition services program specialists our office assistants, Katie Part, our director, as well as contacts for financial services. Steve Bowers is the individual who processes the claims for reimbursement. Chad Moore and Brian Gerkensmeyer, um, those are the folks to answer your questions about USDA foods commodities. That program is administered through the Department of Health and Human Services, so it is outside of the Department of Education. So direct your questions in regard to USDA foods and commodities to Chad Moore or Brian. And then lastly on the contact information is the individual to contact with food safety concerns and health inspections. Also, operated by the Department of Health and Human Services. So the directory includes important people that you need to know. 
as we progress down to the next slide. Programs, item, programs and items under the school meals program. Because we know our time today is, is limited, we want to ensure you our website has much more information than we can present today. This information can be found under the school meals program. For example, if your school operates the after school care snack program or special milk, Click on the link and more information about that program or these programs can be found. The same would apply if your school is, is selected to participate in the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. We also want to draw your attention to important dates that as a new bookkeeper, you need to be aware of. So be familiar with our website. Um, it is a wealth of information. Let's go to the next slide. With any program that you participate in, there are important dates to be aware of, and we've included that in your handout packet. Um, this information is also on the Nutrition Services website, which we've already talked about. I also want to point your attention to the forms and resource section where you will find additional information regarding other areas of the school meals program, which includes the forms you need. So under forms and resources, it's divided into three sections. The first section, which let's go to the next slide. is administrative record keeping and finance. This is where you're gonna find the application for income eligibility, verification, all of the attachments, um, A through L and the permanent agreement, um, information about Buy American, charge policies, civil rights. This is a very important section um, that I really need you to focus in because this is where you're gonna find everything you need um, in regards to forms that are required. The second section as you go down the page is the food service and nutrition. So this is the section where you're gonna find information about meal pattern, um, the documentation required to operate the program, the production records, the document that um, meal pattern is in compliance. You're gonna find information about food safety, recipes, all of the informations that, that pertain to operating a, a food program. Um, we highlight this area directly in our training to food service directors and staff that we're conducting um, at the present time. And then the third section I want to draw your attention to is the regulations and policy memos issued by USDA. So this is a link to the USDA website where all of the regulations that pertain to each program can be found and the policy memos that have been extended in regard to um, those regulations. Moving on down to the next slide. I have now covered the Nutrition Services website briefly, but then I want to talk about the Child Nutrition Program CMP online system. And you can access that website under nutrition services, you can see the red arrow that points to where you click. And then when you click on that, then it comes up with click to access the online application claim system. So you can enter through the nutrition services website or you can bookmark the page after you click on online application and claim system. 
So let's go ahead to the next slide. We've already talked about that it, it requires a user ID and password to be um, to have access. Um, and I've included the web address that takes you directly to the CMP system. This is the area where you complete your application, you re complete um, your, your financial report, you have access to direct certification, um, and also um, food safety inspections, verification. So it's a website embedded in nutrition services that takes you to where you need to submit the claim for reimbursement. So after you enter your user ID and password, then you will see the next slide. A colorful box appears that tells you what programs you have access to. And so on the screen, we can see that in the blue box is the school nutrition program. And for this sponsor, they participate in the summer food service program. And probably the majority of our sponsors will see both of these squares because during COVID, you were operating the summer food service program. So the colorful box indicates what programs you have access. A guide to completing the application will be sent to you. Um, as Ali mentioned, the application for school year 23-24 is currently open and you will be completing that now. Um, so keep that in mind. And let's move to the next slide. Click on the application link in the top left corner. You will see claims, compliance, security, and a, a search function. So we have a dark blue bar at the top of the screen with applications, claims, all of those um, icons are listed. And we see the colorful box with programs and the year that we can select. So you can navigate between programs and years of operation. If you wanted to go back and, and look at last year's application, you're able to do that by clicking on year and selecting school year 22-23. We are currently in 23-24, where you need to be to complete the application. You can look at previous year's claims as well by clicking on year and it will take you to whatever year you want to select and look at claims that were submitted, for example, last year's claims for reimbursement. Slide 60, um, accessing the application. So once you click on applications, then you will see a drop down appear and how to access the application is by clicking on application packet, and that will take you into the application. We can also see that we have the verification report, we have food safety inspections. You are going to be in school year 23-24 to submit the number of health inspections that you that were conducted at your school, at the various feeding sites. So you're going to be in school year 23-24 to input information for 22-23 in regard to food safety inspections. Um, for our non-publics, um, you will be clicking on financial report, which will take you into the financial report that needs to be completed. Um, by July 31st. I encourage you to complete your food safety inspections the same time that you complete your application packet and then to access, access the direct cert list. 
you're going to click on direct certification, direct verification at the bottom of the screen. Moving on to the next slide. Once again, make sure that you um, are in school year 23-24 and you can navigate through the years as I have previously mentioned, which is a nice feature of this program. Slide 62, to complete the application, after you have clicked on application, applications at the top application packet, then the screen um, that is displayed on the slide will appear. There is the sponsor application that has to be completed at the bottom of the page under site applications, you will see that there are, there are listed site applications for this particular school that we have on the screen. We can see that they operate one feeding site. We also have checklist summary, which tells you what, what um, as you answer the application, if you need to submit additional information, you will see that checklist summary um, will need to be completed. We have attachment lists if anything needs to be uploaded. So for example, um, any additional information that is required can be uploaded into the attachment list. And I really need you to ma make sure that you don't get confused with the seamless summer option under the site application. You are going to be completing site applications. You are not operating the seamless summer option. That was a program that schools had to, had to participate in school year 21-22. It still appears on the application. Um, just make sure you're in the top site applications. So once you have completed all of these different areas of the application, you are going to hit submit for approval button. It becomes red. Once you hit that, um, then it's going to tell you that the application has been submitted and is under review. So that was a brief overview of getting started in the program and completing the application.